This video is going to be about the book called The Rising Tide of Color by Lothrope Stollard. Lothrope Stollard is a white supremacist that knew that the white world supremacy is in danger. The book is also mentioned in the two movies called The Great Gatsby and its books. Civilization going to pieces. Have you read The Rise of the Colored Empire by this fellow Goddard? Everybody ought to read it. The idea is that it's up to us, the dominant race, to watch out or these other races will have control of things. Tom's very profound lately. He reads deep books with long words in them. It's been proved. Scientific. We've got to beat them down. As you can see, certain groups are more concerned about power than the balance of life and its natural order. So they created an artificial one. The rising tide of color describes the collapse of white supremacy and the colonialism due to population growth among the colored people. In this book, I wanted to focus on chapter four, the black man's land. You can also find this whole book online if you're interested in reading the other chapters. In the beginning of this chapter, Starter talks about the African population in the Sahara Desert. But in this book, I wanted to focus on Stoddard's observation was with the Ethiopian movement. He writes, one of the most significant, not to say ominous, signs of times is the Ethiopian church movement. The movement began about 15 years ago, some of its founders being Afro-American Methodist preachers. A fact which throws a curious light on possible American Negro reflex upon their ancestral homeland. So even other races know about the connection between African Americans and Ethiopia. Later in the 19th centuries, many Africans in the Ethiopian movement found themselves in America due to slavery, found solace in a passage of the Bible speaking of Ethiopia, which connected them to their land and gave them hope of blacks being able to one day self-govern. Their interpretations of the biblical passage, Psalms 68, verse 31, Ethiopia shall soon stretch forth its hands unto God, united them to one another, and also to their homes and cultures. Let's keep reading. The movement spread rapidly, many native mission congregations cutting loose from white ecclesiastical control and joining the Negro organization. It also soon displayed frankly anti-white tendencies and the government became seriously alarmed at its unsettling influence upon the native mind. Shortly afterwards, the authorities outlawed the Ethiopian church and forbid Afro-American preachers to enter South Africa. As you can see, the European colonies in Africa have a stronghold influence on the African minds and where they go. It's no secret that the white supremacist mind frame was to keep colored people down. Stoddard also explains, unless then every lesson of history is to be disregarded, we must conclude that black Africa is unable to stand alone. The black man's numbers may increase prodigiously and acquire alien veneers, but the black man's nature will not change. Black unrest may grow and cause much trouble. Nevertheless, the white man must stand fast in Africa. Fortunately, the white man has every reason for keeping a firm hold on Africa. In short, the real danger of white control of Africa lies not in brown attack or black revolt, but in possible white weakness through chronic discord within the white world itself. As you can see, Africa has been supporting everyone else except for the people it's actually for. It has been systematically designed to make other nations rich and to keep the original people out. So let us not forget they are on the hunt to keep us down.